In this video, we'll begin modeling the upper portion of the Ferrari 308 using Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're gonna carry on with the Ferrari 308 in Fusion. Uh, at this point, we've modeled pretty much everything from the sort of the fender line or ridge line down. And now we need to take care of the roof and the pillars and sort of connect it all together to get that Ferrari look. So at this point, we have some design decisions. We created the Ferrari with this sort of mid line. And that's a standard practice I've seen done before where you sort of take what the middle of the car looks like and you extrude it out. And oftentimes it's used when building a car from multiple surfaces. And the reason it's done is because it makes it a lot easier to connect the edges together. Now, that's more of a traditional surfacing method, but it's something I wanted to approach on this car because it does have such a clear midline. And a lot of cars from the 70s and early 80s that were in this sort of category um, were very clear like that, right? So if you look at things like uh, C3 or early C4 Corvettes, um, you know, they have the ridges on the fenders and then sort of the midline just is straight across. Um, same thing when you look at, you know, other maybe supercars like a Pantera or, um, you know, again, some of those cars from that era, really the design was in uh, the flares and the overall profile that you looked at from the top and the side. And the Ferrari is no exception to it. It's a beautiful car. Uh, but relatively simple lines. I mean, obviously we've, we've made this with um, pretty minimal uh, level of detail as opposed to like the Subaru where we were working on adding all these little edges to get the creases. These uh, supercars from the 70s uh, had a lot less, a lot more gradual curves and a lot less of those hard details. And part of it is design, part of it is manufacturing. So um, it does help us when we're modeling. But what we want to do at this point is first, we want to fix this front corner, and then we want to begin modeling the top. And I did mention that we have some design decisions that we need to make. And those design decisions are whether or not we're just going to take some of these faces and extrude them up and try to build the, the roof line, or if we are going to build it as a new surface and delete away what we don't want and attach it where we can. So I think the second method is probably going to be the best where we um, sort of design it as its own and, and connect them together. But again, I don't know that there's a right or a wrong way to do it. It's just the way that we're going to approach it. But first, let's fix this front corner. And when I say fix, when we look at this from the top, we we need to pull this corner out. And if we look at this in box display, it's pretty close. But at this point, we have a lot of sort of geometry underneath it, right? So there's a lot that's riding on the shape. Uh, so we have to be careful and make sure that we take everything we need and add detail only where it's required. So I think the best option for us, now that we're happy with the shape, is to add a little bit more detail. And in this case, I'm not gonna go to the mid like I normally do. I actually want to add detail going across. And you'll notice that it's not working. It's, it's sort of adding it to these loops. Um, and that's just simply the way that the geometry is laid out. It's it's causing problems when we're trying to insert those points. So let's try it one more time, see if we can get it to work. And you can see that it is able to, to go down. Um, but again, it's gonna have problems here. Sometimes what we need to do is rotate so we can select inside and, and sort of work our way down. And here's where insert point comes in handy because we can follow the curve of the geometry that we made and then we hit enter. Now we've got a new division. We have to take a look at this in smooth display to make sure that we didn't mess anything up. But in box display, everything looks pretty good. So now we'll show the canvas, go to the top, and we want to begin pulling that geometry out. So I'm going to use modify edit form, what we typically use. And if I double click that edge, notice that it grabbed everything. Now, when we try to move this, it's gonna cause problems. You can see that it kind of moves in and out. Um, we could use scale, we could also use move. We have to be just very careful with the geometry that we're working with, but um, that works out okay. We'll double click the center mouse wheel. And I think it moved it a little bit too far. So let me pull it back in. 
And that gets us pretty close. I don't know that we're going to get that perfect transition, and I'm not sure that it's really worth the effort, honestly. Um, this gets us pretty close, but we can, uh, you know, we can certainly spend a lot more time to try to get it right. I again, I don't think that it's necessarily worth it, but um, that is obviously something that we can spend time on. I think in order to get that sharp crease, we would have to do a lot more edges in this corner in order to push it out. But I, I don't think it's really worth it, especially not in this video series. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start building the, um, mainly we're going to start building the roof, and then we're going to work on the roof from there. So there are a couple different ways that we could do this. We could create a sketch and create an extrude. Uh, that's something that we really haven't done before. So I'm going to try to create a sketch. We're going to do it on the right plane. And I'm going to use a spline. So we can, the, the transition from the windscreen to the roof is pretty consistent. So it might be good for us to just create a spline that goes all the way over the roof until it sort of dips away right here. Okay, so I'm gonna say okay. And now we have a spline that's pretty close. So we're gonna take that spline, we're gonna use create, extrude, we're gonna select it, and we're just gonna simply pull it out. Now, when we pull it out, we need to be mindful of the divisions that we have on the rest of the car. So I'm gonna pull it out to roughly where that division is, and I'm gonna say okay. I'm not gonna add symmetry yet, um, I do want to go into box display for the car and for the top, but this is going to give us a good starting point. One thing that we can do from here is we can begin to extrude more and, and again, be mindful of the edges that we have. So I'm going to double click on this edge and use modify edit form, and I'm going to pull it out just a little bit farther. And then from the side, I am going to pull that edge down. And we don't want to pull all of it down because the windscreen actually gets pulled back, but we want to select everything that is part of the roof itself. So from the right, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to pull it down. I'm not going to pull it down all the way because we need to add more edges to it, but that at least gets us started. Then from the top, what we want to do is we want to begin pulling back the windscreen pieces. Now this is probably more divisions than a windscreen needs, but it is giving us the curvature. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make any changes to the number of divisions just yet. I might have to later, but for right now it's gonna be okay. And then from the side, just like with everything else, we want to keep the the transition consistent. So now that we've moved it in the top view, I'm gonna make sure that from the side view, what we actually have is a fairly consistent curve. Remember, we're in box display now. If we go to smooth display, that looks pretty good. All right, so now we've got the makings of the top of the car. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna grab a couple more of these edges, and I'm going to extrude them using Alt. So I'm gonna pull that out just a little bit, and then I'm going to begin moving these vertices. We're probably gonna need a bit more control back here. Um, we're probably gonna to wanna to move some of these around because we do want that consistent patch layout. Um, but again, this is gonna be a good starting point. This is also great practice because uh, working with a single surface like this uh, gives you a lot more flexibility than you have with um, trying to do the whole car. You'll see here what I'm actually doing is I'm trying to get it over to the, uh, the A pillar and that's gonna allow me to extrude that down to make that A pillar. So I can move this over and um, sort of begin to, begin to build out that geometry. Now, obviously, this is not enough curvature for the windshield, but I'm not worried about that just yet. I'm, I'm really just trying to focus on the location of uh, these edges. So I wanna carry this back edge down and I wanna carry this front edge forward. So when we look at this from the front and we go into smooth display, um, obviously we don't have the curvature that we want yet. And from the side, that looks like a mess but we are close, we're close. So let's make sure that we are back in box display mode. Let's select this entire edge and let's pull it down. So once again, we're working from the side view. I pull this down and likely I am gonna need um, more. You can see that from the side, the A pillar is actually about here. And you can see from the side that these are um, quite a bit lower. And once again, we will add more divisions 
and um, and add more control to it. But for right now, we're just looking to to match this curvature. All right. Once again, back in smooth display, um, it looks okay. Before I go any further, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Modify Mirror Duplicate. Take that across the midplane. Make sure that we're welding it, and say OK. Now when we go to Smooth Display, the curvature on the other side is helping to control it. All right, So you can see that now we're getting more of a smooth transition on the windscreen. That's really what we're looking for. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to carry this back a bit. And we're not going to finish this in this video. Uh, I just want to make sure that we're clear there. This is going to take a little bit more work. But we're just going to build the foundation. So we'll take this edge and Alt. We're going to extrude it back. And we're going to do this as, um, as one. This is by no means will this work. But the idea here is that we're doing very low polygon modeling. And you can see that back here, that's going to line up just fine. Here, we're going to probably need another edge or, or some way to connect that. And then from the side, we want to bring that down to the right location. So we're going to start to pull it down and start to pull this down. And once again, if we go to smooth display, um, it doesn't have the control we need, but you can see that we're lining up pretty close to our creased edge. And um, it, it actually looks pretty close, so it's not, it's not too bad. So back in box display mode, going to go to our top view one more time. And we are going to take the A pillar down. Now the A pillar is going to be a little bit tricky because we're going to need to divide it up based on the windscreen. So to get started, I'm going to just pull it down as one, and then we will break it up uh, individually once we're happy with its location. And this is really at the heart of low polygon modeling, is you want to do as little as possible. Uh, and so when I say as little as possible, I mean you don't want to add too many controls that are just going to make it more difficult. So um, this is pretty straightforward. The location of it from the top and from the side works out. When we view it from the front, it looks fine. So, um, so that's actually a pretty good result. So let's go ahead and bring the side back. Um, and then this will give us something that we can ground to the body. And then we can use that to help control the windshield. So let's hide our canvases. Let's just take a quick look at what we've done. So I'm going to turn this to a smooth display and this into smooth display. It's starting to look a lot more like a Ferrari. All right. So at this point, um, this is probably a good place to stop because it's going to take a lot more work to finish this off. So I don't want to spend too much time um, getting stuck in uh, in all the little details because the interface between this and the rest of the car is going to take us some time. But we want to get the shape roughed in first with as little as possible, and then we'll connect them. So we're going to go back to box display. And before we uh, finalize this, what I'm going to do is... I want to double click or select that edge. And I'm going to go to insert edge. I'm going to put an edge in there. I'm going to do it one more time. Insert edge. Noticing that 50% between the whole thing was the middle of the windscreen. 50% between here is that. And then if we repeat this one more time, 50% between there is that. So the consistency that we have on developing these patches to control the curvature um, is working. It's giving us the control we need. and it's it's avoiding having to create too many different pieces. Now we're just going to go weld vertices. We're going to move the windscreen to the A pillar, and um, that'll give us our curvature. So if we go to a, a smooth display, um, you can see that it actually has a crease here. So this edge right here is creased, and that's not necessarily what we want. So let's select it, modify, uncrease. And it moves the A pillar over. Uh, that's OK for now. If we look at it in box display, it's still fine. And smooth display, it moved it over. But um, from the front, very Ferrari-esque. From the side, very Ferrari-esque. We're, we're getting a whole lot closer. So this is a great place for us to stop. Let's make sure that we do save it. And um, if you want to continue to play with this before the next video, then um, try to figure out exactly where changes need to be made to the shape to match the blueprint. And then in the next video, we'll talk about connecting them together to um, ultimately to make the rest of the body. So uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.